Last night, I was finally able to watch The Five Bloods, the new Spike Lee film that's about a group of uh, Vietnam veterans who in the present day decided to go back to Vietnam where they buried some gold to try and track it down. It kind of gives flashbacks to the war, has a lot of commentary. It's a Spike Lee movie. A lot of commentary <laughs> on the treatment of um, – African-Americans in general, but even especially in terms of they served and were forced to serve in uh, what's you know not a good war and do immoral things that deeply broke them and then came back and weren't treated well. And so the movie for the first half of the film is a lot about them and understanding who they are and what they've become. And then the second half kind of turns into this um trying to get away with the loot thriller film. And I'll say for me, it was a very interesting, odd experience that made a lot more sense to me when the credits started rolling and I saw who wrote the screenplay. And I'll elaborate on that on just a second. But the first half of the movie, I wasn't fully on board with it. I thought it was pretty unfocused and taking too long to get to its point. I was like, man, this is this is spending a lot of time. It was like a hangout movie, kind of. Yeah, it is a little bit. Yeah, yeah. uh, It's like a hangout movie with these these guys in Vietnam and meeting some people they met before running into the Viet Cong and you're just a lot of them in bars hanging out in their hotel rooms talking on boats talking and then you get to the second half and it's pretty pretty as soon as you get to the point in time where they get to the get out into the the, the jungle it actually it very much changes and it's a different genre entirely it's very ten- like it's like very relaxed, taking its time, and then it hits a point, and you're like, whoa, for the rest of the movie. Right. And um, when it was that second half, I was all on board. And when it was on the first half, I was like, man, I'm not sure about this. It This feels very unfocused. And um, and it really worked well in that second half. Like, it, it sure, I, yeah. I dug it. And, and I mean, the, the obvious comparison would be um, – Triple Frontier from last year, except with a lot more social commentary and me- messaging and themes to it, a lot more depth to the characters and meat to the story. Yeah. And um, even kind of on the messaging, the, I thought the characters and story themselves, I thought communicated the message very well about the war itself, about um, treatment uh, of veterans, treatment uh, of black men that served their country <laughs> that I think – Spike Lee's kind of heavy handedness hurt both the message as well as just the, the, the heist exciting side to it. Mm. So it was, I was like kind of all over the place on this one. It was like, I, I like loved things about it. And I was like, man, that was a little bit too much. And like, I, I don't think that that thing right here needs to be in this movie. Cause you're already communicating so much and you're, 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 you're over preaching at me. It's sometimes at the wrong time. Are you are you talking specifically about uh, Paul's monologues towards the, towards the end? Not even that. I I, I didn't even mind Paul's monologues, but like okay. um, I, I don't, I don't want to go into too many spoilers in case someone hasn't seen it. Sure. But like the the scene where uh, um, how, how to say it the when things really get intense and machine guns show up. Oh, okay. and in yeah. the middle of yeah. it, they start discussing the war, and it it um, the whole movie's kind of intercutting to actual pictures of the consequences of war and like you're in the middle of like a scene that for just the plot, it's very plot important. And then it starts going into Spike Lee on his soapbox and shows a picture of a dead baby. Um, Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, Yeah. um, yeah. And it was like, uh, you're not helping me see your point more. Cause you already saw, I was already on board with your point. Like you already communicated it. This is a plot. This is like the plot of the movie scene. And I'm not even watching because I'm not going to look at that. And so I think there was some stuff where it kind of distracted. And so it was, it was an odd mix of like, uh, and at the end of the day, I'd go, I'd go positive on it because I thought sure. that second half was so strong. And I, I think it does communicate this point well enough. Um, um, but I think it's, and I've said that, I said the same thing about Black Klansman. I liked like 85, 90% of it. And then 10%, it's him on a soapbox. He's not using story to communicate. He's standing on a soapbox, like beating you over the head. Which that's what he does. That's kind of his thing. Right. And I much like whether it's a Spike Lee movie, whether, it, you know, coming from a faith based background, the reason I don't like faith based movies is because is it's people standing on a soapbox saying things like that. I don't want you standing on your soapbox, uh, no matter the genre. I want you to use the story 
and he had a story that did it. His story did tell it and he just went too far. So the credits started rolling. And I, do you know who wrote this? No, no, I, I don't. I don't remember. Uh, this is it. You're, you're going to dig this. You're going to dig this one. Uh, <laughs> so the original movie was it was written on spec by uh, Danny Bilson and Paul DeMeo. And as soon as the credits started rolling, it said Danny Bilson. I was like, wait, Danny Bilson wrote this? And if you don't know who this is, um, his daughter is Rachel Bilson. She was one of the stars of the OC and the show Hard. He has been a screenwriter for like 30 years now. Uh-huh. He wrote The Rocketeer with Paul DeMeo. They're a writing partner. They wrote The Rocketeer. They yeah. also were the showrunners for The Flash TV show back in 1990. Um, so that's why I know who they are because of the, the, these movies from my childhood that I knew so well. So as soon as his name showed up, I was like, what's the backstory on this? So basically they wrote this movie on spec seven, eight years ago uh, um, for Oliver Stone to make the film. And then uh, whenever Oliver Stone dropped out, Spike Lee took over four or five years ago and he, he converted it basically to an African-American centric story. And that's when I saw it. I was like, OK, I could feel that while I was watching this movie. Really? That, um, yeah, I, I could um, I, it, because it, it felt a little bit too much like a movie that it was structurally it worked. And then it had a, a little bit too much Spike Lee on the soapbox. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, and that's the thing that I'm saying. It's like and like like there's in that. And I'm not saying that is it. That's the that's what Spike Lee does. That's his thing. Um and so I didn't know if there was like a backstory to that. And as soon as I saw like, OK, OK, there, there's there was a different version of this and he came in. OK, I, I see how this kind of played out the way that it did. Right. Right. What, what was your take? I actually muted you. We were on a, me and you were on, a, on oh, your, yeah. your channel the other day Podcasting, and you yeah, were yeah. talking. And it's like, I don't, I don't want to hear anything. So I muted it um, while you guys were talking about it. No, what was your good. take on it? Well, I'm glad you did because I'm glad it, it didn't uh, influence your, your, your uh, opinion and such. Um, I absolutely loved it. And for all the reasons you thought it didn't work. I liked it. And and that's crazy because I'm usually not someone who who likes, you know, getting beat over the head with a message or whatnot. But I thought that the way Spike did it in this film, like just it, it, it felt like a gut punch, man. Like the yeah. the end of this movie, not only is it like I mean, everyone is saying this. And yes, it's true. Like not only is it timely to what's going on right now, so it hits a little bit harder, but it's just like I feel like it, it's just something that when when you're watching it, and, and this is why I kind of like the way he structured it. The first half, yes, is a hangout movie, and it, it feels a little weird when you compare it to the second half of the movie. Um, there's a lot of things Spike is trying to tackle, and it's less refined and focused than his previous efforts in Black Klansman. Yeah. But I think you needed that first half. And and, and on rewatch, I, it, it really clicked with me. And I think it worked a little bit more for me on, on rewatch. The first half is really just, it's about getting you into the mind of these characters, understanding who they are, understanding you know, that they've gone through some really, uh, through experiences that most people will have not seen, will have not gone through ever uh and at a time when they're not even given rights at like back home in their own country um and so seeing how each of them has kind of you know lived with that either uh had it you know way down on them or like tried to move forward and, and 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 stuff like that uh is fascinating and i think it informs the latter half of this film where it starts to get more stylized where the action starts to take place and characters are making these really just like rash decisions you know so uh and, and this is especially apparent with obviously paul delroy lindo's character who is unbelievable unbelievable uh i mean the guy has been around for years and he's given some yeah. incredible performances this is this is the best performance I think he's ever given, just bar none, um, and and it speaks to something interesting about just like a, someone who's just like so fundamentally broken, and and right. and searching for someone to, you know, the leader that's going to help him, that's going to help bring him out. I mean, it's it's interesting because he's he's an African American, he served in Vietnam, and for every reason that you know he shouldn't be a a trump supporter he he is because he yeah. because of like the rhetoric that that you know trump used at the time to 
I guess, win over the the, the people uh, that he thought, you know, using rhetoric to, to win over people who were the most vulnerable. And obviously this guy is incredibly vulnerable given what he's gone through. And he thought that he saw uh, a leader who could help him out. And it's like through the latter half of the film, he he un, he comes to terms with what's happened and and and, uh, and everything uh, through like his his reconciling with um you know, their fallen comrade who they've gone back to get their remains and stuff like that. Um, and I also just think it's an interesting point uh, that Spike makes about um, the, I, I guess the, the generational difference between uh, black leaders, you know, you know, when, when, when Chadwick Boseman, there's a scene where Chadwick Boseman is, is talking with his platoon uh, and, and he's talking about, you know, you know, they always refer to him as their their Malcolm or their their Martin. Um, and I think something that that uh, and Sharonda kind of pointed this out to me, which I definitely picked up on, uh, was that, you know, Chadwick Boseman is telling them that, like, look, you can we, we need both Malcolm and Martin. There are times when we can be peaceful, but then there are times when, like, we've been silenced. We, we can't we, we, we haven't been heard. And so we need to you know get a bit more aggressive and and act in 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 a in a more uh you know i guess abrasive manner and whatnot that people aren't always going to agree with it but there is room for both of them um and i thought i just thought that was such an interesting like comment to make and it definitely applies to what's going on right now and then when you incorporate the uh the son played by jonathan majors who's a who's amazing uh in this you see a little bit more of that generational divide of of where like uh you know, you see his experience that's going on and compared to, uh, you know, the 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 older experience and whatnot. Um, and then they also tackle kind of like the the absence of uh, of black fathers and whatnot in, in uh, you know, obviously in the, in the characters like growing up and, and the effect that that may have had. And so it's like there are just like so many interesting things that I think Spike is getting at. And for a lot of people, it's overload. And I get that. And that's what I was like. Yeah. Said, once again, I'd, I'd I'd be positive on it, but there's just too much in there. Like it, it wants sure. to tackle all of the things that it that could be touched on, and so it goes for all of them a little bit, and so it feels very unfocused um, between all of it. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I. I. I, I and I, and I get that. And I, I think for me why it works and and why i think it, it it all kind of comes home in a in a way that's satisfying is the the latter half of the film and the ending once that happens i i completely understand what he's going for and i think the in a larger context the the the, the film seems more laser focused and and obviously i i think it is a little too he's biting off a little bit more than he can chew in this film but when he brings it all home at the end it works and on rewatch it works even more so i yeah i mean it kind of comes down to the fact that do you like spike lee movies do you uh, then then you'll probably enjoy this you know obviously i think it is a little bloated it's long-winded but it I don't know, man. It just, it worked for me. It, it, it's like, I think it's probably my favorite movie of the year, if I'm being honest. Uh, it, it's just like a great, you know, it, it, there's great, uh, you know, homages to classic cinema, like Treasure Treasure of Sierra Madre is obviously a big influence on this film. Um, I, I love kind of like him poking fun at, you know, uh, the, the Hollywood depictions of the Vietnam War, you know, saying it's like, well, you know, all these movies kind of depict it like we've won the war. But we didn't win the war, you know, and, and like they all they all show it from the uh, I, I, I guess the, the the white perspective instead of like the, the black perspective, um, which is these guys who are forced to fight, fight an immoral, immoral war and take rights from people that they weren't even granted back home, uh, which is where the real fight was. And so just seeing them grapple with that was uh, riveting in my in my opinion. So I, I loved it. Yeah. And uh, like I said, if it. I think it tackled a lot of that really well with the characters and with the story. Yeah. And then it, it just had a few too many other rabbit trails and took a little bit too long on some of that. And that's where it, um, uh, like I said, I, I be very clear to be positive because it feels like one of those movies that sure. either are the two thumbs up. It's an A plus. It's one of the best <laughs> of the year. Or yeah. that means you hated it. Like, no, no, no. Like with all movies, there's nuance. And you can be like, man, I really liked a lot of this, but it was frustrating that, 
da 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 da. And that's that's what this one was for me is that uh, there was a lot of those things that was I, I wish it could have been reined in a little bit more and, and focused a bit more.